Pani Selvan was lying on a wooden bed in the room next to the Acharya Bhikshu's room in Nagaipatanam Sudamani Viharam. For three days he had a severe fever, self-awareness was often absent. During these days the Bhikshus kept a watchful eye on him. They used to give medicine from time to time. They often poured water into their mouths and watched cautiously. When he occasionally regained consciousness, he tried to think about where he was. The painting on the wall in front of him caught his attention. Devas, Gandavas and Yakshas were seen in that image. Some of them were carrying various musical instruments. Some were carrying white umbrellas and umbrellas. And some were carrying plates with many colored flowers in their arms. This scenario was realistic. All the images of the gods appeared as living images. After watching the scenes often, Pani Selvan thought that he had arrived in the land of the angels. He also thought that all those Devayacha women were coming to welcome him. He wondered how he had reached the heavenly world. It seemed as if he had come to heaven through a stream lined on both sides with thick palm trees and golden lotus flowers blooming on palm trees. He also seemed to consume the fragrance from the lotus flowers as he remembered the stream. He faintly remembered when he was brought to a boat in a river by a son and daughter of God. Deva Kumaran looks like a Shiva devotee. He often sang sweet hymns. What did Deva Kumari do? She didn't sing. She only said a couple of words now and then. It was like a god. She often looked at him with eyes full of passion and love. Where are they now? It seemed that he must have come to heaven through the stream, which was full of golden flowers blooming on the acacia bushes. He also seemed to consume the fragrance from the lotus flowers as he remembered the stream. He faintly remembered when he was brought to a boat in a river by a son and daughter of God. Deva Kumaran looks like a Shiva devotee. He often sang sweet hymns. What did Deva Kumari do? She didn't sing. She only said a couple of words now and then. It was like a god. She often looked at him with eyes full of passion and love. Where are they now? It seemed that he must have come to heaven through the stream, which was full of golden flowers blooming on the acacia bushes. He also seemed to consume the fragrance from the lotus flowers as he remembered the stream. He faintly remembered when he was brought to a boat in a river by a son and daughter of God. Deva Kumaran looks like a Shiva devotee. He often sang sweet hymns. What did Deva Kumari do? She didn't sing. She only said a couple of words now and then. It was like a god. She often looked at him with eyes full of passion and love. Where are they now? He faintly remembered when he was brought to a boat in a river by a son and daughter of God. Deva Kumaran looks like a Shiva devotee. He often sang sweet hymns. What did Deva Kumari do? She didn't sing. She only said a couple of words now and then. It was like a god. She often looked at him with eyes full of passion and love. Where are they now? He faintly remembered when he was brought to a boat in a river by a son and daughter of God. Deva Kumaran looks like a Shiva devotee. He often sang sweet hymns. What did Deva Kumari do? She didn't sing. She only said a couple of words now and then. It was like a god. She often looked at him with eyes full of passion and love. Where are they now? Apart from gods, yakshas, and kinars, Buddhist pictures also have an important place in the land of angels. It is as if they are the guardians of the celestial elixir. Every so often a Buddhist pikshu approaches him. He pours some elixir into his mouth and leaves. No matter how many other comforts there are in heaven, only thirst is abundant. Shouldn't this Buddha Bhikshu pour a little more of the elixir into his mouth and leave? Why is this poor intelligence even in Devaloka? Perhaps one should not drink too much of the elixir at once. Is it an elixir? Or maybe some alcohol? Do Chechi Bhikkhus even touch abominable wine? Will they bring it to his mouth and pour it? If not, why does he feel dizzy? Why do you lose your memory after drinking the elixir? After spending three days in this way alternately in the world of celestial beings and in the world of forgetful witches, Pani's rich man awoke on the morning of the fourth day, as if waking from sleep, and regained complete self-consciousness. 
The body was weak, but the heart was clear. He knew that the figures on the opposite wall were pictographs. He came to know that those Deva Akshakinaras were not standing there to welcome him, but were welcoming Lord Buddha who had visited Devaloka. On another wall he saw a picture of Lord Buddha ascending into the sky surrounded by clouds. He found himself lying in one of the Buddha Viharas. When I thought about where and in which Buddhist temple, I remembered all the incidents that had happened since I started my journey from Sri Lanka one by one. Vandiyathevan and himself were in the wave-tossed sea until their hands got tired. Then there was only confusion. At that moment a Buddhist Piksha came into the room. As usual he came with a bowl of nectar in his hand. Piksha stared at the prince as he approached. The prince reached out and took the bowl and saw what was in it. He confirmed that it was not the divine elixir. He came to know that it was medicated or medicated milk. To the Piksha he said, Swami. What place is this? Who are you? How long have I been lying here like this? He asked. Piksha did not reply and went back. He went to the next room and said, Acharya. The spirit has cleared well. The memory has come back perfectly. What was said fell on the prince's ears. After a while an elderly Piksha came into the room where Pani's Selvan was. He also came close to the bed and stared at the prince. Then, with a radiant face, he said, Pani's wealth. Nagipatanam Sudamani Viharam is where you are. You have been here for three days with severe fever. We have given you this service. Blessed are we. Said. Blessed as I am, I have longed to visit this Sudamani Viharat. I have seen it from outside once when I was going to the port of this city. I happened to stay here as an ungodly person. How did I get here, Swami? Can you tell me? Asked Aromazai Varman. Prince. First take the medicine in their hand and I will tell you the details I know, said the Pikshu. After eating the medicine, the prince said, Sir. This is not a medicine, it is a divine murdham. You have taken so much pains to treat my case. But I am not going to thank you for this. Acharya Piksha smiled and said, Prince, you don't need to be thankful. Lord Buddha has given us that treating the sick is the highest dharma. Buddha dharma commands us to treat even sick animals. There is nothing special about treating them. We are very indebted to the Chola clan. Their father Sundara Chola Chakravarti, their son-in-law Ilaya Prati has also given a lot of support to Buddhism. We also know that you arranged for the renovation of Buddhist viharas in Anuradhapura, Sri Lanka. In that case, we do not expect any thanks from them for this little help we have done. Teacher. I do not speak in that manner about giving thanks. I realize what a severe fever I must have had. I have seen the fate of those afflicted with this fever in Ceylon. By this time I must have gone to the celestial world. Might not the Devas, Yakshas, Kinaras have welcomed and entertained me? Today. Am I supposed to drink Amrita in the midst of gods and goddesses and be blissful? You have spoiled it. You have brought me back to this world full of misery after reaching the threshold of heaven. Therefore, I do not think that they have done me any good. That is why I said that I am not going to thank you. Acharya Piksha's face lit up with joy. Pani's wealth. When the time comes for them to go to the heavenly world, Devendran and other gods will come in airplanes and take them away with a shower of flowers, but that time is still far away. They have so many great things to do in this earthly world. Shouldn't they finish them and think about going to the heavenly world? Said. Even now Pawnee Selvan, who was lying down, sat upright. His face shone with a rare glow. Waves of lightning like light from his broad eyes lit up the room. Master. What you say is true. I want to accomplish some things in this world. I want to complete many great works. I saw this Sudamani Vihara once from outside. I saw the stupas and viharas in Anuradhapura. I am going to rebuild this Sudamani Vihara as big as Abhayangiri Vihara there. I am going to set up statues like big Buddha statues in this Viharam also, and I am also going to renovate the temples in this Chola country. 
Looking at the stupas and viharas in Sri Lanka and thinking of the temples in the Chola country makes me sick in body and soul. I am going to build a huge temple in Tanjavur with Vanilla and Gopuram. I am going to make and construct a statue of Mahadev in a suitable scale. Acharya In this Chola land, Buddhist stupas and towers of temples compete with each other and reach the sky. After a thousand years, the descendants born in this divine Tamil country are going to stand in awe of them. I am going to make and construct a statue of Mahadev in a suitable scale. Acharya In this Chola land, Buddhist stupas and towers of temples compete with each other and reach the sky. After a thousand years, the descendants born in this divine Tamil country are going to stand in awe of them. I am going to make and construct a statue of Mahadev in a suitable scale. Acharya in this Chola land, Buddhist stupas and towers of temples compete with each other and reach the sky. After a thousand years, the descendants born in this divine Tamil country are going to stand in awe of them. The prince, who had been speaking like a madman, fell on the bed due to lack of strength in his body. Immediately Acharya Bhikshu held him by the shoulders and gently laid him down without his head hitting the bed. Rubbing his forehead with his hand, he said, Prince. You will accomplish all the great things you intend in due time. First, your body must be fully healed. Be still. Said. 